Time to run through some multiple choice questions for our preparations, compilations, reviews, all of those wonderful types of engagements. So first we have which of the following circumstances would generally require an accountant to decline to perform a compilation of financial statements under our SARS. So generally speaking, this could apply to anything other than SARS, SSAE, just you know, generally in any engagement that you are going to need to do anything. I'm just going to say it like that, right? So a substantial portion of generally accepted accounting principal disclosures was omitted. So this is, remember, where are we? Decline to perform it. So first off, we're in the uh, engagement, the engagement acceptance stage. Let's, let's keep that in mind. Whereas if a substantial portion of gap principles and disclosures were omitted, that's, that's going to be later on in the engagement. So I would eliminate letter A because that's just not where we are in the uh, engagement process, right? So I would cross it off for that reason. Also, if this is the case, you don't need to decline the engagement. You could just say, hey, include those. And then, you know, if... Uh, if they don't, if management doesn't, then you withdraw, right? If we look at letter B, accountant was not able to come to an understanding with the representatives for services to be performed. I mean, it doesn't matter if it's consulting, if it's tax, if it's audit, I don't care what it is. If you, you know, even if it's not accounting, right? If it's just a normal business transaction, if you can't come to an understanding with each other, then you're probably going to decline to do whatever it is, compilation, review, audit, I don't care. This is likely going to be the best answer. Now, if there's lack of independence between the accountant and the client, right, do you need independence for compilation? I'm going to say no. So that's why uh, we can just eliminate letter C. And the accountant had no prior experience with similar organizations. Well, we actually see this a lot throughout the exam. We say, okay, no prior experience or knowledge about the client or the industry. So what do you do in that case? Well, you just get the experience. You, you work with a specialist. You study up a little bit more, right? There's, it's totally fine. You don't need to be an expert. You know, you may, maybe you never did a compilation engagement for a, a manufacturing client. It's fine. All you got to do, work with specialists, study up, do some trainings, and that's totally fine per the AICPA and for all these engagement types. So we're going to cross off letter D, leaving us with just letter B. And for reference, I do want to show you a slide that we had. So this is going to pull back from our lessons, right? So we need the signed representation letter. If, if the representation letter is not provided, we need to withdraw because what is that representation letter? That's the agreement between both parties. So we definitely need that and don't want that to be lacking. All right. If while performing a review engagement, an accountant has reason to believe that material misappropriation of assets might have occurred, what should we do? So we believe that there is problems. We believe there's problems going on and that's not good. So what should we do? Okay, well, do we disclose it as supplementary information in the report? So we're not going to do that. We are going to address it. We're going to talk about it. We don't, like, if there's a problem, right, you, you don't want to just publish the problem and say, oh, look, everyone, hey, there's a problem. No, no, no. You go to the client and say, hey, there's a problem. Let's fix it so then we can give you a clean opinion. So you're not going to disclose it right away. You know, if if, uh, if, if this, and this is believed to have occurred, it's not even confirmed yet. So if there actually is a problem and then, right, you have to issue a qualified opinion, well, then you would disclose it, but that's many steps down the line. This is, we're not even sure if there is, it's the reason to believe it. So what are we going to do? So require an investigation to determine whether the, whether it actually occurred. Okay. I'm going to leave that one on the table for now because it sounds legitimate. Assess whether controls are in place that deter similar misappropriations, right? So, I mean, yeah, like, that, that wouldn't be a bad thing to do, but that's not going to address our immediate concern about this one particular instance. So I'm going to cross off letter C. That's not going to be, uh, you know, a remedy for what we're dealing with right now. But document communications with senior management about the matter. So we're in a review engagement, right? This is not a full-on audit. So that's why I'd say maybe not letter B, right? Maybe not letter B because that sounds much more in scale and scope for an audit. Whereas for a review, we're doing limited procedures, limited assurance, right? Just analytical procedures, some things like that. So I'm going to cross off letter B and go with D. And you know, if we take a look here, 
If we suspect fraud during an engagement, we should document communications. If we have reason to believe that there's mis uh, material misappropriation of assets, document communications with senior management. That's going to be our, our go-to when it comes to review engagements, leaving us with just letter D. All right. During the compilation of a client's financial statements, accountant comes to believe that the financial statements are materially misstated. So what are we going to do here? All right. So this is a compilation engagement. So what should the uh, you know, accountant do? Well, we do have some information here, and I'll refer back to that in a second. But let's let's uh, preliminarily look through this. Okay. So obtain additional revised information to correct the financial statements. Okay, I mean, that sounds pretty solid. Allow the client to decide whether modifications are needed to properly present. No, it's not up to the client, right? You're the, uh, you know, as the practitioner, you're the one who's got the experience. You're the one, it's your job to make sure that these financial statements are looking good. So we're not going to let them decide. Limit any investigation to inquiries of the client. Uh, no, I mean, you can do other things to investigate. I mean, you're not going to just ask the client, hey, did, did you misstate this? No, we didn't. Oh, okay. I'll trust you. <laughs> no, you're going to do a few other things. You're going to double check your work. You're going to check the records, do a few other things, depending on the scope of the engagement, uh, perform no additional procedures. No, nah, you're going to do something more. If there's reason to believe that there's a material misstatement, you're going to check into that a little bit. So again, I am going to say it's letter A. We take a look here, right? Management's responsible for all of that, all of this work here. And essentially, right, like if there's a no matter the engagement type, if you know there's a problem with the financial statements, if it's material, you got to correct it. That's just kind of how it works. You know, responsible for affirming that the effects of any corrected, uncorrected misstatements are immaterial, right, are immaterial. So, you know, anything that was not corrected should be immaterial, but anything that was material should be corrected. That's what we're getting at here. And that leaves us with just letter A. Wrapping it up here. We've got which of the following engagements may an accountant or practitioner perform when there's a lack of independence? Well, this is going to come down to simply memorization, right? We've got our wonderful, wonderful chart here. So take a look. Are we AUP review compilation attestation? So looks like compilation. Oh, you don't need independence, right? Uh, agreed upon procedures. We look, we look. Okay, it says you need independence, right? And, and this is me just going through, like, you know, you should definitely have this chart memorized. Obviously, think it through a little bit further. That's fine. But just straight plug and chug, free points right here. Let's take a look. Where do we have a review? Review. Okay, we need independence. Sounds good there. You know, whether it's an SSAE or SARS, you know, attestation engagements. These are attestation engagements, and they all require independence. So the only one here that we do not need independence is going to be our compilation, right? You're just putting together the financial statements for the client, and that's what you're doing. You don't need to be independent. You know, you're doing the financial statements, leaving that here. As we saw, how important these charts, they're very important. Make sure you understand the attributes and requirements of each engagement type, and you'll do just fine. Thank you all for joining. It has been my pleasure, as always. I will see you in the next one. Hey there. Are you ready to not only pass your CPA exams, but truly understand and enjoy the material while studying? I know it seems impossible, right? Especially to enjoy the material. We'll do it together. Tap into the power of cpa.examprep.ai, where we've got personalized quizzes, multiple choice questions, memorization guides, flashcards, simulations, all tailored to your learning. Our adaptive study planning puts you on the fastest path to success and lifts you back up if you fall behind. Avoid wasting your precious time and money attempting an exam with a low chance of passing because who wants that? We want to get you through this process as quick as possible. Our exam readiness prediction lets you walk in with confidence knowing that you're prepared for success on exam day. Thankfully, there's no payment method needed to get started. So why don't you come join us? Visit cpa.examprep.ai and let's achieve your exam success together.